Monetary reformers like Ron Paul say that printing money only prolongs the pain because he thinks that inflation is shift A. An article from CapsFool.com, another guy worried about inflation shift A, I explained. Another one, why the Fed recklessly keeps printing money, worried about inflation shift A. And Vincent Goya's blog, worried about inflation shift A. I hope I can correct their impressions and they can help. Ron Paul, printing money only prolongs the pain. If you think there's too much money around and it'll cause inflation shift A. If you don't know about inflation shift B. So from Prison Planet by Paul Joseph Watson, December 11th. Amidst the hand-wringing of the automaker bailout debate, Ron Paul took the opportunity on the House floor yesterday to remind Congress that the real culprit behind the financial crisis is the Federal Reserve. Yes. And that allowing the Fed to continue to print money without audit will only prolong the pain. No. Of course, printing it and only giving it to the bankers, well, okay, yeah, but printing it and lending it interest-free to the poor, that's okay. If you look at the grand problem we have, it's much bigger said Paul. There were many who predict that the climax would be exactly as we are witnessing, said the congressman before lamenting that no one seems willing to go back and discover how financial bubbles form and how they burst. Instead, we just carry on doing the same old thing. We spend more money, we're not, we run up more debt, we print more money, and we think that's going to solve the problem that was created by spending too much money, running up debt, printing too much money, and here we are today, stated the congressman adding that Congress was debating about tinkering on the edges while failing to deal with the big problem. There's nothing wrong with spending money to do useful stuff. I'll pay my tax for army and police to handle strife. I'll pay my tax for doctors and nurses to protect my life. I'll pay my tax for all engaged repairing road and sewer. I'll pay my tax for social servants helping out the poor. I'll even pay my tax for bureaucrats with no regret. I only object to paying tax for interest on debt. And the one thing he doesn't identify is the interest on the debt. So, he's worried about printing more money. Well, there's nothing wrong with printing and spending more money. It's having the banks print it and loan shark it to us. So we borrow, spend it, and tax it out with interest. That's the problem. If you borrowed the money from the Treasury interest-free, like Abraham Lincoln did, Ron Paul wouldn't have a problem. But because Ron Paul's forgotten Abe Lincoln's Treasury notes, he wants to stop the presses when we need more money because he's a gold bug. He thinks inflation is a function of the paper when we know it's a function of the software. Paul said that the Fed's creation of over $8 trillion in obligations was outside the audit of Congress. As long as you got good stuff for it, who cares? Ah, but you didn't get good stuff for it. They create this money, and when the Fed chairman comes before our committee, we ask, where did you dispose of this $2 trillion that you've created recently? He says, well, it's not your business. He doesn't even have to tell us, exclaimed, exclaimed Paul, adding the Federal Reserve was out of control. Well, that's true. He may be bemoaning the fact they're creating it and just giving it to the rich guys, who can then loan shark it to us poor guys. But he certainly isn't bemoaning the fact that they're lending it to us poor guys because they're not. So I wrote a response, December the 11th, printing interest bearing money causes inflation. Shift B inflation. Same money chasing less collateral, not more money chasing the goods. After foreclosure, I should have added. Printing and spending interest-free U.S. Treasury notes backed up by human labor is no worse than bringing more poker chips into the game backed up by collateral in the cage. Search shift B inflation and someone see if they can get Ron Paul to see the truth. And wouldn't Ron Paul be an asset if he could get off this, ooh, there's too much money, and realize that there's too much foreclosure? All he's got to do is catch on that there's two possible inflations. 100 bucks chasing 100 pota potatoes. You can have more money or less potatoes. Who says it's always more money just because in some countries it is? So, Ron Paul, somebody help him. Please get the message out there that printing money is okay if it's interest-free. The thing about Ron Paul, except his preoccupation with Yellow Rock, he thinks there's already too much money chasing goods shift A inflation, and doesn't realize it's shift B inflation, same money chasing less goods after foreclosure. And the best thing is that he could probably find the truth faster than those who aren't even looking in the right direction.
from okfrank.blogspot.com. The article is Why the Fed Keeps Recklessly Printing Money. Since so much of the rest of the world's economies are affected by U.S. trade and banking, that the U.S. has more power to dominate worldwide by printing money. They are playing a dangerous game where everyone stands to lose. Why else would they keep printing money? That's not the problem. They're not printing money. They're printing interest-bearing money. They are not so stupid as the old German economists and the hyperinflation of 1923. That's right. People with wheelbarrows full of money and store shelves empty. Just like today, store shelves full, people with empty wallets. Gee, not the same, is it? Are they? Update. When I posed this to Canadian John Termel, the engineer, he simply responded saying it's not the same as 1923 because the general population does not have the cash, only the banks have it. The public can't get their hands on any of it. Vincent Gioia's blog, G-I-O-I-A, and it's talking about the Federal Reserve Bank. It's not what you think. Part one, a bit of history. To begin with, the Federal Reserve is a private company of bankers with 12 bank branches that confiscate our money, and they have been doing this for almost 100 years. They're not part of the United States government, but they collect hundreds of billions of dollars, sometimes trillions, from the American taxpayers every year. Another thing not commonly known is that at the beginning of our country, there was no income tax at all. We didn't have, nor did we need, an income tax until we got the bankers into the government picture. The income tax was only needed to pay interest on the bankers for our money that they loaned to our government. And us. Yes, you read that right. The Fed, mostly on paper and computer, creates money and pays the Treasury a small printing fee for currency and then loans this money to our government. At interest. Our taxes pay them interest on this loan that cost the Fed virtually nothing to make. What a sweetheart deal they have going for them. And of course, the Professor Flaherty's of the world say, yeah, but then they give back all their profits to the government. So, because they take it, then give it back, it's the same thing as not taking it. Well, why would they take it and give it back if they're not getting something out of it, right? Think about it. Just because the economist thinks that taking it and giving it back ends up zero, there's more to it than that. So the congressional record of the U.S. government can buy back the Fed at any time for $450 million. That's about half the amount we pay them daily in interest. Why then, you might ask, does not the Congress buy back the Fed? This is a good question, and one that has never been asked publicly by anyone. One reason may be that Congress likes the Fed because they can spend all they want with no restraints. Isn't that untrue? There's, he's saying the F Congress spends all they want with no restraints. And that's going to cause shifting inflation. Unfortunately. Kennedy also saw the danger in a private federal bank having the power to issue money. On June 4, 63, Kennedy signed Executive Order 11110, which virtually stripped the Federal Reserve of its, its power to loan money to the United States government at interest. He declared that the privately owned Federal Reserve Bank would soon be out of business. This order gave the Treasury Department the authority to issue silver certificates against any silver in the Treasury. Four billion worth would have been a real knock in the interest charged by the banksters. He wasn't alive too much longer. This executive order still stands today. In less than five months after signing that executive order, he was assassinated. The United States notes silver certificates he had issued were taken out of circulation immediately. The Federal Reserve notes continue to serve as the currency. It's estimated that 99% of all paper currency is Federal Reserve notes and only 1% is Treasury notes. So, what is a Federal Reserve note? It's a piece of paper. A Federal Reserve note is just what it looks like. A piece of paper with no backing whatsoever. Well, that's not true. It has the backing of its tax payability and any collateral pledged. This is why Hong Congress hates gold and silver backed money. It forces them to live within their means. As long as they spend to pay people to do useful stuff, there can't be any overspending. And when there's nobody else to be paid to do useful stuff, you run out of reasons to spend. There is a natural limit to how much can be spent doing useful stuff. People never make the link 
between spending and getting useful stuff for it to back it up. Can you think of any group who might benefit from the assassination of Abraham Lincoln and John Kennedy? Well, when you follow the money, there are some logical but admittedly pretty scary possibilities. And I responded to Mr. Gioia, King of the Poppers, all true. So what do you want to do about it? Why represent our collateral with dirt chips for a fee when we can represent our collateral with our chips for free? As banking systems engineer, I've engineered the blueprint for a financial lifeboat you can build for yourself. Search for lets, time bank, uni lets, community currency, or see my videos on how Argentina went from banking system broken down in 2001 and IMF debt all paid off two years early in 2006.